everyone, BJ Chorus. This is the Hollywood Moment at Home Edition. And today joining us is Eric Martsov. Eric, it's an incredible day because you're journeying into the second week of the new production of Mamma Mia, produced by Five Star Theatricals at the Bank of America Performing Arts Center here in Thousand Oaks, California. Eric Martsov. Eric, how's it feel to be preparing again for something that you started last year around this time, stranded in a drive-in in Thousand Oaks. It feels like Groundhog Day. It's it's the strangest thing because we had the musical wrapped with a big red bow on it, ready to present to everybody. And we were so proud of it and we were ready to go. And then, then the pandemic hit just at that moment. And we were all devastated. We wanted to present this to the community. We had worked so hard on it and we had to wait a year and a half in order to bring this thing back to life. But I kid you not, it's better than ever. I think the cast, there are some new cast members uh, that have joined, but boy, were we ready just to throw this thing out there because we just had it in our heads and our bodies and our mind for so long. And it's Mamma Mia, it's a party in a box. It's exactly what this community needs right now to just drop your cares, drop your issues and your stress and come to the theater and dance your butt off to ABBA. And the audiences, BJ, I kid you not, hilarious. Like we, sp I spend most of my time backstage peeking out the curtain, watching people just jump around. And it's, it's joyous, it's absolutely joyous. It, it reminds me of why I got into musical theater in the first place. It's, it's just fun. Well, you had a fun test run during October, basically last year with the drive-in. How did it help prepare the audience you feel for when you all finally went back on stage in Thousand Oaks? Well, the, the drive-in concert was, was, that was basically a message that was sent from Five Star Theatrical to the community to say, hey, we've taken a few punches. We're bruised up a little bit, but we're not out. We will bring you music and, and, and theater and joy in any capacity that we can. And that meant people staying in their cars and us in a stage in a parking lot. Is it an ideal presentational scenario? Absolutely not. But did it still, you know, water that plant a little bit and keep those seeds growing? Absolutely. And it was such a it was such a clever idea for Cindy Murray, who is the director of Five Star to do. And I credit her for keeping the blood flowing in the veins of of uh, five star theatricals because it, it worked and we we raised a lot of money from those parking lot concerts and enough to keep the theater moving and going I... people are getting paid people are are showing up people are just happy you know once again it's been a long time so let's talk about sam and this character because you <laughs> go through a a lot of costume changes, and this is really a technical production that you guys are producing at the theater. So let's talk a little bit about the character and about the motions of going through the costume and the, the musicality and the technology that you're using in this production. Sam Carmichael. Um, the question is, is he the baby daddy or not of Sophie? Um, and that remains to be seen. The funny thing is I've had a lot of friends come to see the show and the curtain goes down and they're like, so so who's the dad? It still kind of leaves you in this foreign place. But I looked at Sam Carmichael the same way I kind of looked at Ethan Winthrop from Passions when I first took him on in the- uh, <clears throat> Oh, Mr. Winthrop. Oh, really, I just, I love your children. No way. I do. You, you're, you're Gertrude. I'm Gertie. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, oh my gosh. Yeah. I had no idea. You had me, you should be on the stage. Seriously. Wait, wait a minute. There's something I don't understand, though. If, if your family's still in danger, why did you reveal yourself to me? Ethan, that's the best part. Juanita is captured. So I'm safe. I mean, it's safe for me to tell you that I'm alive. We are safe. We can be together for the rest of our lives, just like we always planned. Oh <laughs> Sense that... On paper, it's kind of vanilla. Uh, there's not much going on. Look, he's an architect in khakis. You know, he, he's he's your everyday Joe. And he just happened to have this lovely affair with, with Donna back in the day. And he's back on this island. And 
He's been throwing this curveball. I wanted to spice him up a bit. I just, I wanted to get him out of the khakis. So I believe I'm the first Sam Carmichael to be, be, be wearing jeans. So that's, uh, I'm very happy about that. Um, I, I, I gave him a little rock and roll. I gave him a little right. edgy, edginess. Um, uh, I'm not presenting him in a perfect musical theater straight laced package, which is interesting because my, my co-star, Kim Huber, she is a Broadway vet, man. She was one of the original Bells in Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. And she is legit musical theater royalty. And she's good. And she's on every note. And she's just pinpoint accuracy. I'm a little more off the cuff. You, you, I really don't plan out my vocal strategy. So what you hear is what you get. And when you put those things together, it's 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 kind of fun. We, we, we kind of bounce off of each other in a very... I don't know, Tom and Jerry kind of way. We're very different, but I think it works. And we uh, we definitely have a mutual respect for one another at this point. And she's she's terrific. She alone is worth the ticket price to come see. I'm just kind of the the crazy dude, you know, in the back, in the jeans. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> but, no less. You asked, yeah. you asked about the technical aspects of Mamma Mia. It is a technical show. There's a lot of lights. There's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of music. It is ABBA. It is synthesizer. It is, it is uh, fun and upbeat and lively. But the wonderful thing about Mamma Mia is, which some people fail to understand, is it's not just a pop, silly musical. It's integrated with a lot of heart. There's a beautiful storyline about a mom and a daughter, you know, coming to terms with, with the daughter growing up and, and becoming an adult. And there's this song called Slipping Through Her Fingers, which every parent can relate to as your kid slowly grows up and slips through your fingers very gently before you know it. They're, they're adults and I'm going through that myself. So I sit backstage during that number, uh, right behind the curtain and listen to it every night. I swear to God, man, it hits me every night. I get all, <sighs> um, so there is heart that is woven through Mamma Mia. And I think the director, uh, uh, Richard Israel has done a great job of recognizing that. So not just fluff, it is definitely something that can hit you in the heartstrings. As a veteran in the industry, Eric, does it thrill you when you have the opportunity to actually use your creative genius to create a character in a different way and at the same time keep it true to its authentic self? That's that's a lovely question. Thank you for using the term uh, genius. I would lose I would use that very loosely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's been my career, BJ. You know, I've I've most of my television career if not all of it has been about replacing characters and putting my own spin on them and, and owning them and making them my own which is not an easy task sometimes musical theater is the same way they, you're taking on characters that have already been established sam has already been established as this guy this architect in khaki is doing his thing he's straight laced and he's going to sing these songs and the fun i have with what i do for a living is to put me inside of these characters and that's inevitably why we're hired. That's why producers and directors choose you out of a barrel of actors, because they find something in you that they want to see, that they want to blend into that milkshake of these characters. And uh, that's the fun part for me, honestly. Eric, Eric, you always have fun in putting that rebel edge into all your characters. You got to <sighs> love it. Yeah, I mean, I do. You're right, I do. I have a lot of fun finding the uh the unknown territory you know I, I i found ethan to be kind of vanilla on passions he was written that way on paper so i always tried to find a way to make him a little more uh, i don't know about this guy you know is he, I, I wanted to steer him away from pg and make him more r somehow you know what's your favorite song in the show that you think everybody will really resonate to when they see mama mia because abba i mean what an incredible group and they're 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 timeless now and their longevity just will continue to live generation after generation just like this musical technically will absolutely uh their, their music uh is is it's terrific and it, it there there are uh there are fun tunes there are heartfelt tunes uh knowing me knowing you which is one of the ballads that sam sings is is about a relationship that's just not going to work and it, it's it's kind of about 
you know, one member of the relationship coming to terms with it and being like, I know you, I know me, and this is where the story ends. This is how we have to say goodbye. And it's, it's very hard to do that. Heck, I'm teaching my kids right now. They're entering high school. I know they're headed for heart. They're headed for heartbreak. They're headed for love and, 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 ugh, and all that, ugh, ugly, all that stuff that comes with love. And so I, I resonate with that one. I resonate with slipping through her fingers because I'm watching my boys grow up so quickly. It's so hard to watch and see. I literally, if they go to college, I'll be an empty nester in like three years, which is nuts. Cause I, I feel like I just taught them how to tie their shoes. But Eric, you still feel like you're in your teenage years yourself. So, I mean, there's a great relationship where you, you can relate to them in so many different facets. <laughs> I've, I've kind of held on to my youthful vitality. You know, I mean, look, I turned, I turned 50 this year. And I know. what was it like for you turning 50? What do you think I, was that one pivotal moment for you? And what, what's your, what's your goals for this decade coming forward for you? Oh God. I will, to answer your previous question, uh, turning 50 was no big deal. Honestly, it, it's just another day. You're only state so of mind, here. right? Yeah. It, it, no, it really, really is. I know it's said called that all the time, but right. I think especially in our industry, people make a big deal out of age. Right. They they try to hide it. They don't like to talk about it. I think if you feel good and you're proud of what you've accomplished in the time you've been on this planet, then get on a mountain and shout it. Right. You know, hey man, I'm I've been around. I'm 50, and there's there's uh, there's wisdom that comes with that, and I'm okay with it. I feel good. I'm, I'm doing musical theater. I'm on, I'm on TV. I enjoy my job at Days of Our Lives. My boys are healthy. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I, I, I had a, I had a really, really hard year, BJ. I, you know, I, I lost both my parents earlier I know, in the we year, were and so I'm, I'm at a place in my life where I know that you shouldn't think about how old you're getting. You should think right. about the moment and live in it and have a great time. And that's why doing Mamma Mia was such I was just going to say, that's the best part about Mamma Mia because it instills all those philosophies, Eric, and to live the moment, dream the moment, and dance yes. the moment. It's all happening here and now. And the good thing is people can join in that celebration by getting tickets at 1,000 Oaks at the Bank of America Performing Arts Center by going to... B-A-P-A-C, thousandoaks.com. Get your tickets now. Tickets for five shows coming up. Whether you're a morning, afternoon person for the matinees or evening shows, it's a place to dance their hearts away, leave their troubles behind them, and have a lot of fun. Right, Eric? Leave your troubles behind. Yeah, you, you said it, man. You said it. I mean, life is hard enough. We live in a stressful time. Traffic is bad, but you know what? You can go to the theater for two hours and just let it all hang out and have a great time. And uh, we're getting we're getting terrific reviews on this show. I've I've invited all my friends. I'm like, guys, come come kind of come to this theater and smile because you will. And it's so, a great theater. I mean, that's oh, it's beautiful, the beautiful facility. The setup of the theater is great. Remember, you could get your tickets now for Mamma Mia Thousand Oaks at the Bank of America Performing Arts Center by going to BA. PAC, thousandoaks.com. Get your tickets now. And we need to remind Eric, too, that, you know, it's in Ventura County and everything with the theater is COVID compliant. And it's a great way to enjoy a show safely and yes. have fun and dance. You can do it. You can do both. You can be safe and responsible and also have a terrific time at the theater. And it's time we get out of our, our homes and get out of our own way and, and live life again responsibly. We can, we can do it together as a community. And that's that's what theater is all about in the end, is coming together as a community, just like being compliant. Um, but, you know, do it, do it, do it not only for yourself, but for your fellow neighbor, you know. So true. And, you know, we got to give a big shout out to for SB uh, 805 for the mission to keep theaters going and get the grants and keep theaters yes. thriving because it's so important, Eric, that local theaters, you talk to any actor that started out and go back thousands and thousands of years, even BC. 
And where do people get started, Eric? It's in the theater in Greece, ironically. In theater. Yes, yes. We have our own coliseum right here in Thousand Oaks. Except right. there's not going to be any gladiators, just just architects in jeans, not right. khakis, in jeans. Exactly. <laughs> Eric, real quick, we need to catch up with what else is going on in your life right now. And that being days of our lives. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. How does this show keep on going over the bar that was set the year before? That's the tricky thing. Um, they well, they've been doing it. They've been knocking it out of the park for fifty-five years, I believe. Yeah. Working on fifty-six. I'm, I'm not even sure. I've lost count. But it's it's a testament to the cast. Um, we are a family over there, and I say that not lightly. We we argue with one another. We we hug one another. We we hold one another. We keep one another responsible. And um, we've we've realized in the end of in, at the end of it, it's a total team sport. So, Bob, I've always said that. I've always believed that everybody is the supporting actor in daytime genre because there isn't one hero. We're we're a hero collectively. And right now, we have a cast that is really interested in working together and creating stories that interlace and interlap. And and Ron Carlavati, he is not afraid to write the stuff that is going to cause controversy. He will write things that are borderline racy and he will go there. And at the end of the day, you have to push the envelope in any forum. I, I get it. I, and I, I think it's important to uphold the historical integrity of soaps and the conservative values that, that they uphold. But it, it's also important to, uh, to push a little bit, push and pull and, and, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss for words too, because it's a, it's, it's hard to put into words what, what makes it work. It's just, it's just a bunch of talented people coming together and doing it on a daily basis. It is a grind, but people appreciate it. You know, I do more fan events than I think anybody in, in our industry. And I talk to these people and I really listen to them and they're happy. They are happy. They, they're, they're just so shocked at what they're seeing and it keeps them tuning in. So Eric, combination please. of all those things. Brady has had so many love interests. And when you think about all the <laughs> love interests and you just keep on still circling through them, it seems like, where would you really like to see Brady land with his love life? Um, I think he's just one of those birds that's really never going to find a branch to land on. I, I don't know. He's just continuously flying around looking for, looking for an egg. I don't know. If I told you that I really wanted him to settle down and be with that one person, I'd probably be lying to you. I think it's fun to watch him bounce around and and have torment. And I mean, come on, do we really tune into soaps to see people just completely happy sitting in a bathtub right. eating strawberries? Eh, no, no. We 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 tune in for the bumps in the road. We tune in for the roller coaster. And Brady he is a human roller coaster you're right he has had many love interests uh some have been doomed not through fault of his own but there's been tragic circumstances surrounding some of them but this Kristen and chloe thing going on right i mean he's in love with a woman that's almost certifiable no no i'm not with chloe i actually just walked into the inn and rachel's just down the hallway why don't I head down there? And I'm sure that she would be so happy to talk to you. Brady, I miss you both so much. You know, just seeing Lonnie, how scared she was that she may never. Brady, was that a gunshot? Brady? Brady? Brady! Oh my God! Brady! Oh my God. Oh my God. Brady! Mara is just, there's nothing she won't do. Now Chloe, the love of his high school life, is back in his radar. It's it's setting itself up for some interesting fireworks. Now, Kristen, I just want you to be happy. If you want to give this another try with Philip again, then I hope he can give you everything that you want. Thank you. But you still need to find a place to stay, right? 
Yeah, moving out was the right thing to do, but it was so spur of the moment, I didn't make any plans. <sighs> well, don't make the wrong assumption here about what I'm about to offer, but if you need a place to stay, you're welcome to stay with me. Kristen comes back to town and realizes the uh, the blanket that Chloe and Brady are weaving together. Oh, she's going to be pissed. It's gonna be. It's gonna be sure, fun to watch. Works. I hate yeah. to see what's gonna happen. There's no. No, no we want. We want to see what's gonna. No, happen. we I want to see what's gonna. See what's gonna you know, Eric, we've got to talk about something that's so important with Days of Our Lives, and that is truly the legacy cast. And when you have a show that is exploring back into the storyline that made Days of Our Lives and Deidre Hall as Marlena because of the possession. And now you intertwined it with the beloved Bill Hayes and this incredible storyline that's coming on and continuing to go on now. How does it make you feel to be working with those artists on one level and then working with Suzanne Rogers and 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 your your grandfather Victor John Anderson. What's it like when you have the opportunity that very few actors can really be proud of? Not unless you're a part of the Days of Our Lives cast, probably. But these iconic legends in the industry. What's it like for you to be able to actually learn and be there with them and get that knowledge and absorb it in? Well, it's, that's a terrific question. And to be able to answer it quickly would be uh, very difficult to do. I, I still I still pinch myself when, I, when I'm when i in there sometimes. I feel the same way I did on my first day of work. My first scene was with Deidre Hall and Drake Hogeston. Right. Hadn't met them before and walked on on set and it was like being shot out of a cannon. I had no idea you were coming. Why didn't you call me? I thought I'd surprise. Well, such a wonderful surprise. <laughs> John. It's Brady. Your son's home. I went to see you first. The doorman at the hotel said that I just missed you and I had no idea you'd be here. And it's great to see you, Dad. Yes. How you doing? Not much has changed since we spoke on the phone. Listen, Blondie and I were in the middle of something. Okay. No, uh, no, 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 no. Forget it. I can come back. No, okay. no, no. The discussion we were having, we can always pick up later. Yes, whatever you say. Whatever I say. What about what you say? John? Your son is home. And here I was working with these people that I've seen on my television for years and years and years. And I realized the responsibility that I had at that moment to uphold what these people had established for so many years. This show is what it is and where it's at because of those veterans and the work that they put in and what they established. It's easy to kind of get on the train when it's moving, you know, but to get that train started, <clears throat> Those folks were the ones that got the train moving on the tracks. And we're just kind of jumping on and enjoying the ride. But we still have a responsibility to keep it on the rails. You know what I mean? But I love all those people that you mentioned. I mean, you talk about Bill Hayes being at the age that he's at and still showing up for work and looking great and sounding great and being game to throw some yellow contacts into his eyes and play the double. I mean, need proof of my power. Fine. Consider it done. <laughs> now do you believe, believe, believe? Come on. Right. I mean, I hope when I'm his age, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, have the energy enough to like have a glass of orange juice and like do a jumping jack. This guy is inhuman. 
And Deidre Hall's been showing up for work with a smile on her face for decades. It's, it's just a testament to their work ethic. And that can be applied in any realm, in any kind of work. But I'm, I'm proud, BJ. I'm, I'm proud to be a part of that cast and sometimes can't believe that I'm actually so easily integrated. When we do cast photos and they're like, you know, Eric, oh, Eric, you stand here. I'm like, I still like realize that I'm standing next to like all these lovely legends that have been here for so long. I still get that feeling in your stomach. Like, do, do I belong here? Like, right. do I? And, and yeah, I do. I do because we're a family. Well, yeah. people are glad to see Suzanne Rogers back on the screen again. Uh, it wasn't Brady and Kristen's baby that died that night. No. It was Sarah's. No, that doesn't make any sense. Mickey isn't dead. Mickey's a beautiful little girl who battles so hard to beat cancer. I miss her so much. But the time I had with her was such a blessing. I love her too, Maggie. I miss her every day. You You've know, spoken to her, right? You know how sweet she is. That relationship, I know. I mean, and that's what's interesting because you talk about Bill Hayes and you talk about Suzanne Rogers who have been friends for years and also dance and theatrical. It's just like, that truly is your family. Yeah, they are. And, you know, uh, Suzanne's troubles have been publicized already out there. What she went through was just insane and it couldn't have happened to a sweeter, nicer woman. And I'll never understand why such hard things happen to good people, but... That's the way the world is. But I'll tell you what, talk about strength. That woman, she just comes back in with a smile on her face, knocks it out of the park. And she's been doing it for as long as anybody on that program. And, oh, I just adore her. Heart of gold, not a malicious bone in her body. Um, just love her. Just she's, adore her. She's amazing. And, of course, her yeah. grandfather, John Anison. <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> Johnny. He He's never going to leave that. He, he you know. <laughs> He will never leave that studio. He will walk, he will be there when all of us have left. And he'll be just like, are we doing another show? You know? And it, right. He, uh, he's one of a kind. Talk about a trooper. Goodness, they get any better. All of them. They're all just, they're all just military style, like never die, never give up, do the show no matter what, get there, no matter what pains you have, no matter how old you are, it doesn't matter. They still want to get there because they feel the responsibility to keep bringing days of our lives to people's television right. sets. Right. Yeah. God bless John you. Salem, what can we expect? I mean, we're hearing rumors that there's going to be more of Beyond Salem. How do you really? see yourself translating over if there is Beyond Salem? I can neither confirm or deny that there's going to be a continued streaming uh, element. But, uh, you know. Maybe. I, I can't tell you, BJ. That's a that's a secret. But uh no, it's it's I think it's a great yeah, uh, it's a very cool thing that they're doing on the Peacock and allowing days to explore that whole realm and that area. And I think it's also a testament to that soaps are very much still alive. Oh there's a lot of oxygen in there uh, in that tank left and there are stories to tell. And Ron's mind, who knows where he's gonna go with no, the next installment. So no question, no question. Amazing force in the writing for daytime. There's no question about that with Ron. Eric, yeah. what other projects are we currently working on? We what am I doing? I I'll tell you, right right now, I am just concentrated on Brady Black and Sam Carmichael. Um, that's enough. I don't have enough hours in the day for you. those two right now. So, And I'm that's what we need to remind everyone that they can tune in to Days of Our Lives daily on NBC and they can follow you eric by going to your social media at at eric martsoff m-a-r-t-s-o-l-f you can just just type that in there's not many of us around and most importantly eric we gotta get them to get tickets now there's only five shows left for mama mia remember you could get your tickets now for mama mia thousand oaks at the bank of america performing arts center by going to ba 
PAC, thousandoaks.com. Get your tickets now. Or yeah, look up five star theatricals. Mamma Mia, you'll find it. it's a beautiful theater. It's a great show. The weather is gorgeous. Um, it's a great time to go out and see a show, honestly. So come on out and laugh with us and cry with us and dance. And dance. With us. And dance. Yeah. I mean, my 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 last outfit is uh is worth seeing. Um it's the tightest jumpsuit I've ever worn in my life. So if you're into jumpsuits, come out just for just to see that. <laughs> Eric, can you sing us out a little a cappella? Oh <laughs> I don't even know which song to sing, and they're all in my they're all in my head. You know what song I really like? Voulez-vous? Ta ta, ain't no big decision. You know what to do. La, c'est la question, voulez-vous? That's the hardest there. C'est, c'est la question. It's French and it's going at a mile a minute. I don't know. ABBA, ABBA is nuts. I mean, it no. took me like, I've been in my car listening to ABBA over and over for the last couple of weeks. I'm sure. Now, Eric, we started off by saying how timeless and how uh, we'll continue on for generation after generation. What are you thinking about? this new album they're getting ready to bring out and reunite ABBA. I I am so excited that they have released some new music. I have not dug into it yet because I feel like if I listen to that, it's going to overlap and get in my head when I'm out there doing Mama Me, I'll start singing the wrong song. But um, they have, they're have they not going away anytime soon. They're kind of like days of our lives. You know, just when you think they're done, okay, we enjoyed it. No, 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 no. We, we, have, we have more to give. And, you know, ABBA... That was fun. The, the music just makes you feel good. Yes. So I, I would encourage everybody to get their get their buns out to that theater and, and take in some Mamma Mia because we can all we can all use a dose of it. Yeah. Remember, you can get your tickets now for Mamma Mia Thousand Oaks at the Bank of America Performing Arts Center by going to BA PAC ThousandOaks.com. Get your tickets now through the 24th last of- weekend. This is the last weekend through the 24th of October. Get your tickets now. See, starring Eric Martsov. Hey, Eric, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you promoting, man. Thank you. This is BJ Chorus with... Eric Martsov. This is the Hollywood Moment at Home Edition. Remember, you can get your tickets now for Mamma Mia Thousand Oaks at the Bank of America Performing Arts Center by going to BA. PAC thousandoaks.com. Get your tickets now. Right, Eric? That's right, BJ. <laughs> Mama Mia, everyone. Eric. Mama Mia, here we go again. There you go. Eric, thanks again, yeah. buddy. Thank you.